Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And as a married couple, we uh, review different movies. We're doing the Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, the MCU. So we're rewatching all these movies, and then we're going to give them a score, and we're going to rank them. Yeah, and basically what we do is we have a score sheet designed to cater to what we believe are what Marvel has kind of aimed for with strengths on their films. Yeah, um, and you can go ahead and you can download that or fill that out online down below in the description of this video. And, uh, you know, we want to hear your feedback, so please go ahead and rewatch these movies, because when you see them again, you know, after having watched all 23 films, it, it, it's different than that, upon rewatching it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, dorks love to meet other dorks, so we would love <laughs> to hear your thoughts, because then we can all kind of dork out and discuss these different movies that we love so much. Exactly. Now on to our review for Black Panther. Wakanda forever! Wakanda forever. Uh, so our first category is lead male and lead female likability. So obviously with the title of the movie being Black Panther, yes. the Black Panther will be our male lead. Uh, for the female lead... Uh, we settled on Okoye. Uh, okay. Now, Nakia... An argument could be made for Nakia. I almost think it was Nakia, but we really liked Okoye more, so I think that's why we made her the, the female lead. Which right away, this is something you can feel free to debate us on down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So, for me, I gave both these characters a four. Now, if you've seen our scoring sheet, a four is that I want them in my inner circle of friends. They're just such good people. I want them in my inner circle of friends so I can be a better person. I mean, I think he summed it up beautifully. <laughs> I also put both of them as a score of four. I want them in my inner circle of friends. Our next category is lead male and lead female bang ability. Uh, so both these characters are very attractive, um, but I gave Black Panther a zero. Uh, nothing personal, Your Majesty. And for Okoye, I gave her a four. Uh, I think this is going to lead to some morning sex, shower sex, thanks, see you later sex. Uh, I think I feel Okoye is a very passionate person. Um, I think there's this fun, flirty nature that she has as well. Uh, she's obviously incredibly attractive. So for me, I actually had the complete inverse of my husband's score. Okay. Uh, I give Okoye a score of zero. It's nothing personal. She's very attractive and, and definitely has se tons of sex appeal, but it's just not the way I go. Um, <laughs> but for Black Panther, I give him a score of four, uh, which is this is going to lead to some, as he described, shower sex, goodbye sex, thanks to you later sex, like, you know, now, a lot of sex. If I was a female, I would definitely give him a five. I don't want to be the queen of Wakanda. How come you didn't give him a five? I would have forgiven you. You can't... <laughs> Very few people get a score of five from it's true. me. It's, true. Um, it's reserved for Cap and Iron Man so far. So the next category is lead male and lead female relatability. So for me, for Okoye, I gave her a score of zero. When, when you go and get your Starbucks coffee, and then you think of Okoye going, like, fighting a battle, it's not in the same world. <laughs> I gave Okoye a, a, a two. This reminds me of maybe of some friends or some family members. Um, and maybe not maybe necessarily, like, you know, know my female friends. You know, this also reminds me sometimes of my of my male friends a lot. So for me, for King T'Challa, uh, I gave him a score of one, which is, I know some people like this, but I wouldn't necessarily call them friends or family. I almost gave him a two as well, uh, but I ended up giving him a three. And one of the reasons I gave him a three is, uh, I guess, you know, this goes back to the kind of the Guardians of the Galaxy thing. Um, the, the issues that he's dealing uh, with, with his father and finding out different revelations and everything, like after, you know, he passed away. My dad didn't do anything like crazy terrible that I found out with after, you know, he passed away, uh, you know, like, you know, like killing his uncle or killing my uncle. Oh, good Lord. You know, like, like, you know, that, that didn't happen. Like, you know, but, uh, one of the, one of the things I found out about my dad that I didn't really know beforehand was that he played semi-pro football. All right. So now after all the family issues, we're going to dive into the villain issues. And our villain in this one is Killmonger. Basically his end goal again is the world's most original. No. Uh, he wants power. Yeah. And he wants to sell weapons. Now, those are the things that have overlapped with kind of a vast majority of the villains that we've seen previously. But. That's, th yeah. That, that, that's there's a but. Killmonger actually has something that does make him a little bit more interesting, which is he's lived a life on the streets, in poverty, in a country that kind of gives him the brush aside, and he's seen kind of what racism and poverty and violence do to a people and he wants to fix it and he sees Wakanda has this amazing technology and this amazing ability to kind of perhaps change the conversation or change the perspective on a whole world of people 
and he wants to give them the pe he wants to give the people the ability to rise up. We've got these two explanations of kind of like what it is on the surface, what Killmonger is on the surface versus what he is at, at his core is kind of to me a great illustration of this character in what I feel is probably the most complex villain that Marvel has made so far. How many people does this film's end goal affect? I said it affects uh, the world's health and happiness. So I gave it a, that a three. Yep, and I agree with that. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? For me, I said these two were equal. I agree. I mean, pretty much they go one for one. You know, Killmonger beats Mint first when they don't, neither of them has the power of the Black Panther. And when they both have the power of the Black Panther, then Black Panther wins. And, you know, so I gave it a two as well. Do you care about the villain? For me, I gave him a four. I said, is it wrong that I kind of like the guy? And he jumps around so much in this movie. He kind of has the arc of Loki, but jam-packed into one movie. I gave him a score of three which is, I hate that guy. However, in the past when I've given a, a villain that score, it's because I do genuinely <laughs> hate that guy. I do want to punch him in the face or like yeah. kick him in the nuts. I mean, I hate them. And if I got my hands on them, I would want to do them physical harm. That's not the case with Killmonger. When Killmonger dies, he winds up making you feel for him, yeah. despite how horrible he's been. Uh, he's got a very human journey. Um, I think it's something that, you know, you, you hear about people in the news who never get a shot and then turn to violence. And that's, that's kind of what his story is. But he did it in an impressive way. Like he did it get, getting through the CIA and being special ops. Part of this is that you hate what's happened to Killmonger. You hate what he's become because you see what he could, what he, what he could have been. You know, if, if everything had been handled better, if he had been brought to Wakanda early on, he could have gone out with T'Challa and they could have been side by side, fighting, kicking butt, oh, saving yeah. the world. Villain bangability. I've never wanted to bang a villain that I give a hate score to. Uh-oh. <laughs> Until now. She's got a hate bang. Uh, he, yeah, Killmonger's a hate bang. Um, <laughs> so I gave him a, all right, I've had a few beers. Let's do this. Um, obviously, Michael B. Jordan is a very attractive guy. Oh, yeah. He has an exquisite body in this. <laughs> so, I mean, like, that's all working fine. It's just his personality. So, like, maybe yeah. if he doesn't talk, then it'll be fine. That's, a, that's okay. You know, uh, I gave him a zero. Up next is plot. Now, the plot for me was amazing. You got a four. Four out of four. So, I've said that it was, you know, I, I wouldn't look away from the screen for any reason. I was very hooked start to finish. I gave it the same score. And in this one, I think this, the responsibility of society played a huge thing. It's something yeah. that Wakanda wrestles with. Uh, do they let the world know about them or don't they? Do they share their technology with the world or mm -hmm. don't they? Um, and seeing what societies, like the detrimental effects of a bad society can have on a person. So I think even though it was, you know, good guy versus bad guy, they brought in some original elements that we perhaps haven't seen in some of the other Marvel movies that made it fresh. Next up is soundtrack. Uh, this one might surprise you a little bit. I gave it a three. I said that the music was a driving force behind the scenes in this film. So Black Panther has its own kind of theme song. Mm in this yeah. and I think developing that and making it so recognizable uh, is great and I think that that's impressive so I gave that a three. What I thought was really interesting too with the music which I, I also gave it a score of three um, and I remember noticing this even the first time we saw this in the theaters was the the difference in the two cultural styles of music so mm -hmm. you had some music in there that seemed to be very authentically African music and then you had rap and so it was such an interesting um, underscore for these scenes that I think represented T'Challa and Killmonger. Next up is female empowerment. Uh, so there were a lot of strong females in this film. In fact, yeah. I'm really happy to report that there wasn't a weak female nope. in this film, um, which is no damsels in distress, no pathetic whiny chicks. I mean, like this, <laughs> well done, Marvel, because... Thank you. It's about time. Yeah. But for me, because of Okoye, I gave this movie a score of four. I said the female is a true hero amongst this because while T'Challa is all wrapped up with Killmonger, there's a huge battle being waged up on the land when they're down in their little hole. Um, and she's the commander on the field. She is there and she's the one who makes a, a big difference on that battlefield. I gave it a zero. I mean, what are the women there for? <laughs> <laughs> it's just that's why I give it a four. Up next are side, side characters. characters. We have Shuri, 
Romanda, the mom, Nakia, his love interest, Wakabi, uh, the guy in charge of the rhinos, and Okoye's love interest, Mbaku, the, Mbaku. Yeah, the king of the Jabari, Claw, he was in Avengers Age of Ultron, and he's the, the bad guy that stole the vibranium, CIA agent Everett Ross, Njobu, uh, played by Sterling Brown, and uh, is the father of Killmonger, Zuri, he's the priest, and he was uh, the other spy with Njobu, Wakabi, Ramonda, Nakia, and Claw all got a one. Uh, I thought they were just there for the plot. So where we agreed was Nakia, Ramonda, Zuri for me, Wakabi, Najobu, uh, Claw, and Ross. They all got ones for me. So I actually had Njobu as a one as well. For me, for my twos, CIA agent Everett Ross, and I had Zuri as my twos. I could, I could see the argument for giving Ross a score of two. Mm. Um, I do think he's highly relatable. If we had a relatable category for side characters, he would definitely yeah. probably be the most relatable. Um, I mean, he probably deserves a one, but I just he separated himself so much from the, all the other one characters that I, I think that's maybe one of the reasons I bumped him up. I actually didn't have any twos. Oh, so wow. So I'm going to jump straight to my three, Okay. which was Shuri. Even though she's the princess of mm -hmm. Wakanda, I found her to be much more relatable she really brought in um, a lighter energy to a film that is dealing with heavy stuff. I gave her a three as well. And I also gave Mbaku a three. Uh, I thought he was very funny in this one. I actually gave Mbaku a score of four. Oh, wow. I said that without Mbaku, this movie becomes barely watchable. He gives us a delicious villain in his first scene. I mean, we, we don't like this guy. He's pompous and arrogant and oh, so machismo coming in, barking and yeah. ready to fight. And... Like, you just, oh, like, you know, he's one of those characters that sets you on edge when he first enters, when, which is like, when an actor does that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, they're doing a great job. But for his journey to come from that to where he is at the end, when he's an ally, he's Prince T'Challa's only ally, apart from the Kingsguard at the very end, and he is witty and sarcastic and he's bringing humor, but he also made me kind of love him. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the movie... I'm like, come on, Okoye, like, drop freaking Wakabi, little <laughs> pansy butt, and get with this hunk of man, because, like, he's yeah, a hunk they should of be, man. They should be together. Humor. So, I say it like that only because this is the one area yeah. that I do honestly think hurt this movie. There was so much... And score-wise. It didn't yeah. hurt the movie as no, far no, as right. enjoyability. No. It just hurt its, its score... Exactly. Based on our score sheet yes. within the Marvel universe, since Marvel has given us such uh, has made humor such a big part of its films, yes, um, you know it's scored pretty heavily on our on our scoring sheets. With that in mind, I gave it a score of eighteen for humor. For me, humor got a twenty-two. Visual effects. So the visual effects in this one, I gave a four. I said my eyes had a few eyegasms. I thought this was a very visually stunning film. This this is a very kind of stylized mm. movie in the same sense that Guardians of the Galaxy is very stylized. I gave it a score of three. When we talk about uh, Winter Soldier and Ken really thought that Falcon was flying through the air. We don't even bring this up every movie. And every, there, every, there every, every movie we do. Every spaceships review. that were falling out of the sky. That goes to show you that Marvel has the capability to make the CGI so seamless with the real stuff on screen. That can fool idiots like me. <laughs> that you might not realize it. Unfortunately with Black Panther, there were definitely some moments in this when I was very aware of it being CGI. Next up is Love Story. So we mentioned it, there is a love story in this film. It is between uh, King T'Challa and Nakia. I'm way more invested in Okoye and M'Baku getting together. I really like- aren't even a love interest I'm, in I'm this. just gonna put this out there, Marvel. I really think they should get together in the future if you haven't written that. I'm just, I'm making a hard okay. bid for that. Um, but anyway, uh, I give it a score of one. I mean, it, it, it puts a bow on everything. It's, you know, I, I think I think that's too high of a score. I give it a zero. I thought it's just there for because Hollywood demands it. Next up is dialogue. So for dialogue, I gave this a four. I said, uh, I'm going to be quoting this movie for years to come. Now, that might, be, might surprise you because usually humor and dialogue are tied in. And if the movie's very funny, that's when you're going to be quoting a lot of things. But I think that this had uh, a lot of very strong, poignant uh, dialogue to it, which is why... I, uh, so some of the ones was... It's hard for a good man to be king. Yes. That really stuck out to me. So for my dialogue score, I gave it a score of three. I said it was sharp, clever, and witty, but I'm going to be honest. I think you're actually right on I'm a four. Um, it does have... 
Next up are action sequences. So what we do is we take the number of action sequences times the score that we give it. So we both agreed that there were six action sequences in this, so there mm. is a lot of action in, in this particular movie. Yeah. Um, and for me, I gave it a score of four. I was sad when they ended. Oh, wow. So that gives my total score of 24 for action. Uh, I give it a three. I said I couldn't believe what I was seeing in a good way, so my total action score is an 18. Last up is Heart. Uh, for this one, I gave Heart a four. I said it warms the heart and waters the eyes. I don't actually think I cried during this one and uh, during this You can't give it a four. Feeling. You can't give it a four. You you have trashed me so viciously because I didn't cry and I gave something a four. So so this is this is wrong. This is wrong. Nope. Oh, I knew that was coming. Yeah, I set myself up for that one. <laughs> now see, I followed the instructions and listened <laughs> to the uh, Abuse of my husband from previous rankings. Uh, but check out the YouTube card if you haven't seen that video. <laughs> so I gave it a score of three, knowing I couldn't give it a score of four if I wasn't <laughs> reaching for the Kleenex box. So I gave it a score of three, which is I got a little misty eyed. But I agree, it was moving enough for a four. I just didn't think I was allowed to give it like, that you score. Should've, you should have given it. Like, the one time she listened to me, the one time. <laughs> Let's move on to our final scores. My total score for Black Panther was a 106, but I got two fist bumps, so that makes the total score a 108. I gave it a final score of 99, but I gave it a fist bump as well, just one for me, but that brought my score up to 100. Uh, so where were your fist bumps? My fist bumps were when uh, Black Panther wins his first match against M'Baku, and then he says Wakanda forever. Yeah, my fist bump actually went to M'Baku. Oh, yeah, yeah. When M'Baku shows up in the final fight with his tribe. And it was in the final fight, but yeah, and, he does it. And that was, I mean, because, you know, at that point, our heroes are outnumbered. M'Baku comes in and suddenly now it's it's not uneven odds anymore. Now it's okay, we got another even match. We're back in the game. Yeah. So if you like this video, go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. And consider subscribing to our channel so you can check out all our reviews, our different uh, Mary Murder Bang videos. We're going to do a video with... You know, our 100 favorite Marvel characters. So we got a lot on, a lot in store for you. And we'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to interact with you. Go ahead and we watch these videos. Fill out the score sheet online. And post your score down in the comments below for Black Panther. Our score was 104. But that's definitely not definitive.